Hey folks, welcome along again to another adventure out on the trail with me. Uh, today I am at a place called Seinatsberry Trail and it's near the town of Dalsbruck. Dalsbruck is famous in Finland for being the first iron foundry set up and uh, the it's also a small port and uh, it has been important as an iron foundry for I think something like at least three or four hundred years. Compared to my previous videos you can of course see that the snow is gone now and the lakes are no longer icebound so uh, slowly the spring is coming you could say spring has sprung. This is called the wellness trail and at intervals along the trail there are these signs which describe the benefits of nature and being out in nature for people. They also recommend people to take deep breaths of the fresh air and enjoy, enjoy the smells or take some snow or some lake water and rub it on your face to make you feel alive. Interesting approach to uh, the full, getting the full experience of being out in nature. So here we are on a stretch of marshy ground that's at the edge of one of these lakes and uh, yeah, it's got this duckboard so that you can walk across the area without getting soaked and also so that anybody crossing the area minimizes any damage by actually walking out. As you can see from this sign, the information is in Swedish because uh, Dalsbrook is primarily a Swedish speaking area. Um, as you probably know, Finland has two official languages, Finnish and Swedish. So this is the name of the trail, this Seinas Beriet. Literally it's for Senet and Beriet is um, hills or mountains, so the Senet hills. Idratsplan is a sports ground, Idrat is sport, and you can probably figure it out from the picture. Knodplatz is a place for canoes. As I mentioned previously, Finland is a bilingual country. There are two official languages, Finnish and Swedish. Uh, the majority of people in Finland speak Finnish as their first language, something like 95%, and then approximately 5-6% to speak Swedish as their first language. Swedish speaking communities are typically found along the west and south coast, and uh, you will find some Swedish speaking people who don't speak very much Finnish, and by the same token you'll find quite commonly Finnish people who uh, don't speak a lot of Swedish. So we've arrived at Seinatsberget and there is a beautiful log lean to shelter here. There's a beautiful fire fire pit. I've not seen one as fancy as this before. And uh nice spacious lean to shelter. There's even cut wood and even forks and tongues for cooking or grilling sausages. And uh there's even a a tarp that you can roll down and cover the front of the lean-to shelter to keep out the rain at night. That is fancy stuff. And then just over here is uh, there is the lookout tower. So I'm going to have a quick climb up that and see what we can see from the top. So we have the sea over there and otherwise if you look west and north it's pretty much forest as far as the eye can see. Fantastic.
Oh, lovely. Beautiful sausage sandwich washed down with a nice cup of tea. Can't go wrong. Cheers. Mm. Good morning, folks. It's about half past six, and uh, I managed to catch the sunrise. It was very nice. Oh, first coffee of the day. Oh, it's good. And some porridge. Yeah, I didn't sleep very well last night. I'm still trying to work out the how to hang the under quilt on the hammock and also I tried the uh, my Neo Xterm mattress in in the hammock and uh, yeah it didn't work it, it just it didn't stay put it was moving all the time I tried deflating it partially and that helped a little bit eventually I deflated the mattress entirely I think potentially my under quilt just isn't warm enough for uh, these spring conditions just yet. Oh well, I'll, I'll get it right eventually. I just have to keep practicing and, and tweaking with it. And I was thinking about changing my YouTube channel name this morning from Snow Kelt to Cold Kelt because I always seem to be complaining about the cold when I'm camping. So the hammock is relatively comfortable. The only real downside is the uh, under quilt not keeping me warm enough. But uh, yeah, I wanted something that would be relatively light, but also fairly durable. It's quite handy that it comes with the, the mosquito net attached, which is good. Yes, I have to find some way to improve insulation on this it's just uh it's just not enough just yet so i've been looking at uh there's a brand called bushman or bushman and the underquilt is called glow there's a version that is a minus 12 or an extreme version something like that minus 14. i would prefer after being so called for so many times to go for the more extreme version just so that I could be warm at night. The other nice thing about a hammock of course is if I didn't have the lava uh, somewhere I could actually sit and cook etc. It uh, doubles very nicely as a seat. I could have my cooking stuff just there and I could cook away so I don't need to take an extra seat with me which is kind of nice and uh, I can sit and I can cook but uh, I could just as easily spread this out the back, the back of me, and I can just lounge as well. And it's uh, very pleasant because my view is absolutely gorgeous. So apparently there's something here called a Vedersteen, which translates to weather stone. And it's only 50 meters away from the lean-to shelter, so let's go and see what it looks like. So. Here is the weather stone. So it's basically a nice granite rock, which is swinging on a chain. And then there's the weather forecast board that goes with it. So you have a weather stone, that's the stone status. And then that's the prognosis or the weather forecast. Okay, well, right now it feels cold. It wasn't otherwise swinging 
and it's dry so the weather is cool and fine yeah it's an absolutely beautiful spot the view from the top of these cliffs is amazing you can see the sea i say cliffs because watch this it drops down quite steep So uh, most of this green greenery you can see here, small little bushes, it's mostly blueberry, blueberry bushes. Fairly soon the small little white flowers will come on them and then by the start and middle of summer the blueberries will already appear and I would say this would probably be a pretty good spot for picking them because uh, there are bushes literally everywhere so yeah must keep it in mind Finns have special spots where they collect mushrooms and blueberries and they keep them secret so that nobody will take in inverted commas their berries or mushrooms All right, this is that gray greenish stuff that covers all of the rocks here is known as reindeer moss, uh, so called because it's a food item of reindeer. Um, of course, it's not a moss, it's actually a lichen, but um, as you can see, if I pan around, um, it covers extensive areas of bedrock oh. okay folks so back at the car safe and sound uh, yeah that was a good good trip I have to just have to tweak my sleeping setup again so that I can be warm at night and actually get some sleep that would be nice that would be actually that would crown things so thanks man for joining me I hope you enjoy the video and uh, yeah, welcome along on the next trail. Hope to see you then. All the best. Bye bye.